I'm going to break this down into two sections. We're going to take a look at the Azure Marketplace first, and then we're going to take a look at Azure DevOps afterwards. The Azure Marketplace is the simplest way today for you to stand up a Cycle Experience Commerce Architecture. You can use the GUI provided there to stand up a complete commerce architecture ready for you to deploy your custom implementation out to. So let's take a look at how easy that is. I've hopped over to the Azure portal here, and this is the section of the portal where you can create new architecture instances. I'm going to search for Sitecore, and we can see Sitecore Experience Cloud is the first option available. I go into here and I click Create, because I want to create an instance of this. I choose my subscription, and then I'm going to give this a name. Next, we need to set up the Sitecore settings themselves. We start by choosing the version, and we're going to choose the latest version, 9.3. And then our topology. And we're going to set up an XP instance because XC is an extension of Experience Platform. We're going to go with a scaled development configuration and the medium should be big enough. Next, we need to choose which modules we need to install. We're going to select to install Cycle Commerce, Cycle Experience Accelerator, and the Experience Accelerator storefront. We go next. And now we need to enter some settings for this. I start by entering my Cycle Administrator password. I'm going to create a SQL logon, and then I'm going to set the SQL Server password. We're going to also generate the certificate that's going to be used. We're going to use Azure Search for our search provider with a single replica set. And the final thing I need to do is enter my Braintree settings. Braintree is the payment provider that's used out of the box for Sitecore Experience Commerce. So I just need to enter the details that will connect to their service. The final thing I need to do is to actually choose my Sitecore license. That needs to be uploaded as part of the process. I enter the certificate details, and then we move on. The final thing I need to do is choose a region where this is going to be deployed to. I'm going to push this out to the Sydney Data Center, which is close to me. We click the final next button, and then we're just going to be presented with a summary of everything we just entered. We can confirm those. We then agree to the user license. And it's as easy as that. We've entered all of the settings required. We click OK. And Azure is now going to go off and set me up an instance of Psycho Experience Commerce. So once you've got your architecture set up, you need to deploy to it. And this is where Azure DevOps comes in. So I just want to walk you through how you can configure Azure DevOps to deploy out to the different application instances that are required to run Experience Commerce architecture. So I've loaded up Azure DevOps here. And I'm going to show you how you can set up a CI CD pipeline for an experienced commerce project. I used this one previously for our symposium event last year. How Azure DevOps works is it splits its release phase into two different processes. You do the build phase first through what's known as its pipeline section, and then you release what's built through those pipelines as part of the release. Here we have a set of pipelines to build an experienced commerce solution. The pipelines are built on the concept of agent jobs each agent job building a specific artifact. And this is tied to a specific GitHub repository. What that means is any time a commit happens to that specific branch in that repository, these pipelines are going to fire. And you're going to end up with a set of artifacts, which you then push out to your servers. Each of these artifacts works similarly to the concepts of a pipeline. So each of the phases below are executed in a sequential manner. You can see the XP job first here. We start off by setting the version of NuGet we want. We then run a NuGet restore to pull down all of the dependencies that this project needs to run. Then we actually run the build. We take this build solution task, and that's actually going to build the solution for us, build all your code base. We run our unit test to make sure nothing's changed. And then I'm using Gulp to run the publish to actually generate all the files that I want to use. So first of all, I do an NPM install. And then I execute that Gulp task. That's going to run through, and it's going to publish each of the projects which need publishing for the XP side. And what you're left with is a folder on disk which contains the exact assets that need to be pushed out to the server. The final thing we do is to wrap those assets into an artifact that Azure DevOps can use later on during the release phase. That handles the XP side, or the storefront side. But we also have code that we need to push out to the commerce engine as well, which handles the back-end processes. And that's where this XC agent job comes in. This is built on .NET Core, so it's much simpler with fewer steps required. We start off uh, by using a .NET CLI, and we can run a .NET restore command. 
We then run a .NET build command to build the commerce engine. Once more, we run our unit test to make sure everything's okay. And when they've all passed successfully, we run a .NET publish. And that's once more going to take all of my files that I need to push to the server and put them in one location that I can work with. We do have an extra step in here, which is where we do some transformation of configuration files. Things like changing the connection strings because they're different compared to working with my local machine compared to when you're working in an Azure instance. The final thing we do is once more to create a build artifact out of this asset. Okay, so we've built our two artifacts, one for the storefront and uh, one for the engine, but we need to deploy them now. So we're gonna go into the releases phase instead. And this is where we take those artifacts and push them out to the server. Here you can see a list of the different releases that have happened historically for this project. You can see currently release 22 is the version that's actually live in production. Now each release is gonna go through a few different stages. We're going to take the artifacts that were comp compiled and we're then going to deploy those out to the different engine roles. We're also going to deploy the XP artifacts out to the storefront and then we're going to sync our content items using TDS. And each of those stages has its own steps within it as well. You can see we also have a deployment trigger, meaning every time a new deployment is available, this will automatically fire. If we look into how the engine is deployed, it's really a simple process. We start by stopping the web service, after that, we take the asset that was built during the pipeline phase, and we're going to deploy that new fresh asset out to the web app. You can see we also do some variable transformation at the bottom. And again, that's just setting some different environment and configuration variables to run in Azure. Once the deployment's finished, we then start the web app again. And that application instance has now been updated to the later version. Minions are the backend processes for the common engine. And it's a much similar process. We stop the minions web application. We deploy the artifact. We're going to do some transformation again because the difference between the engine app and the minion app is only in configuration. Once that's happened, we then start the web app again and that web app has also been updated. Next, we move over to the storefront deployment. Very similar process. We stop the web app. We push out our artifact to get the updated code base out there. And then once that's completed, we start it all over again. After all three of these steps happen successfully, the final thing we do is to sync our content. This stage here has a trigger which says all three stages before it have to complete successfully before this one can fire. And this one's super simple. All it does is take the built TDS package and deploy that directly to the database to give us the updated content we need. Now this is a super simplistic example of how this could work. Obviously we're just stopping app services and starting them again. There's no high availability or anything. In an actual production scenario, you'd probably want to use a blue-green deployment to maintain the uptime of your site during the deployment itself. But this shows how you can get your code base out of GitHub and deployed out to the various application instances as required by Sidecore Experience Commerce.